Hey guys, Roko here, and today we're playing Sonic Generations. We're gonna start things off with Green Hill Zone. This is technically the fourth ever 3D depiction of the Green Hill Zone. The first one was Sonic. <clears throat> Hold on. What was it called? Yeah, Sonic Jam. Sonic Jam was actually the first game to depict a 3D Green Hill Zone, which was basically the hub world of that game. If you're curious what Sonic Jam was, boing boing! Ah! Hold on, hold on. I'm gonna. Ah! Uh, I said I'm gonna boing. Ah! Uh, hey, I got to boing more enemies. Nice. Gotta keep that speed up. Okay, gotta keep the speed going. Pretty obvious. I already know this. But, thanks anyway, Omachow. Yeah, as you can see, Omachow is basically gonna act as your tutorial. Well, your tutorial voice. And, is your annoying video game helper. In case you can't figure out certain things. I mean, there's nothing wrong with a character reminding you of stuff or telling you how stuff works. Basically. Though I believe part of the joke is basically that... Hold on. Hold on. We... Ah. I was trying to do a cool landing trick, but... Looks like that's not gonna work. Hey, I got an extra life. Sweet. Two extra lives, because I got... 104 rings. Nice. Oh, boy. I better hurry my butt up if I want to get that sweet S rank. And I, uh, definitely want that sweet S rank. These... Oh, let me... Yeah, now I can finish my thought. Sonic Jam was basically a compilation or collection, depending on which word you use, of the first three Sonic games, which were on the Sega Genesis. I don't remember, though, if it was the Sonic 3 and Knuckles version was the last game on there, but... Might have been... Holy... Crap, what is that thing? That... We will find out about later on. But they go ahead and introduce the villain first, just not name him yet. Anyway, the second ever game to introduce a Green Hill Zone in 3D was Sonic Adventure 2. Sonic Adventure 2 Battle has that stage 2, though, which came out later. And then we have, well, looks like everybody is celebrating Sonic's, well, okay, if we actually gave him the age uh, gave him the age of his series instead of his actual age I believe Sonic's actual age is supposed to be about 16 or 17 or maybe well I know it's somewhere between 16 and 18 probably so I'd say he's probably 17 or maybe he is 16 I don't know but anyway uh, this is basic this was to celebrate the holy crap don't interrupt me game Anyway, this was to celebrate the 20th anniversary of the Sonic series, and... Everyone, can you please stop interrupting me? Oh, crap! Thank you for interrupting me! I did not realize that! Oh, crap, guys! We are in trouble! Sonic! Tails! Knuckles! Everyone, do something! No, no, no! That's not... That's not the something I told you to do! No! Oh, crap! Yep, we're screwed! Yep, we're screwed! Go get him, Sonic! Oh, good job, Sonic! You screwed it up! Awesome. Well, we're screwed! We are horribly screwed! We are horribly, horribly screwed! Yeah, turns out that if when you're a Let's Player, you sometimes run into on-the-job hazards, such as getting sucked into another dimension! Well, this is just great! 
But, well, anyway, I was explaining that the th second game to have a Green Hill Zone in 3D was Sonic Adventure 2. And then we have Sonic, well, Sonic Battle, which had a 3D Green Hill Zone stage. So it was just an arena, though, with the Green Hill Zone theme, and not a remake of the stage itself. And then we have Sonic Generations. And then we have, but then again, we do have a bunch of versions of Green Hill Zone. Basically, as I'm going to point out later on. But anyway, let's go into modern Green Hill. You know what's kind of funny? The only, one of the only Sonic games to not start off with, well, there's a few Sonic games that don't start off with a Green Hill Zone area. And those are basically games like Sonic Colors, Sonic Unleash, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle, and I'm trying to think of some more. Well, Shadow the Hedgehog, obviously, but... Okay, I'm not gonna do a but we don't talk about it joke, because I don't think it was... I didn't think it was that bad of a game, personally, and I thought it was that... I thought that, well... Well, okay, Shadow the Hedgehog is, to me, isn't quite as good as the other games in the series, but still pretty alright for the most part, and it did have its good qualities. But I'll, uh, get into that some other time. But for now... I gotta say, I really love the general 3D art style. Well, the general style of modeling and art in this game. It's just really cool for bringing that cartoony yet very deep yet extremely good looking and for the most part crisp design 3D and 2D Sonic games are known for basically. Or they're cartoony but actually very crisp design in general. But anyway... Ooh, it's a good thing I didn't get chomped by that giant oversized piranha brain. Whee! Hee! Hoo! 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 Sorry, I think I had a little bit of a flashback to Spectre Torment when I was allowed to wall jump because it was one of my favorite mechanics in that game, is the ability to wall jump. And I'm glad that the game was heavily built around that mechanic along with the slash dash. Because those were just really awesome abilities in general. Uh-oh, lag. But anyway, back to what I was saying. Ooh. Ooh -hoo. Nothing slowing me down. Almost nothing slowing me down. Okay. Good thing I crossed that bridge fast. Because if I didn't, I could have lost a way to get through this fast. Because when it comes to Sonic games, it's all about getting through fast and getting through efficient. At least, to me, the most fun Sonic games were Sonic games that focused on speed, but also focused on how well you can react to your environment. And we end things off with a rank S! Nice! Okay, now we got some Sega points. We can use these in a shop that'll let us buy abilities and such. But I'll show you that in a minute. But first, we have another cutscene. Tails is back to normal. Where's classic Tails, you ask? You'll see soon. Song's just like, wow. Poor Tails. Well, it's familiar to us, guys. Well, guys, it's familiar to us. Because, well, if only you had the ability to break the fourth wall. Okay, so you do. Or in this case, this could have taking place after all that, probably, so he may have broken the fourth wall without breaking the fourth wall. Fancy how that works, huh? Okay, Sonic, you do you do what you need to. Oh, hi, Classic. What's up? 
Uh, Tails, didn't you notice he's shorter? As in, he's almost your height? Doesn't take rocket science. <clears throat> you know, it's not rocket science, Tails. That is a different Sonic. Now we can switch between the two Sonics. And as we can see here, the two Sonics have different versions of Tails. As you can see, classic Tails' voice sounds quite a lot younger, while current Tails sounds a bit older. Anyway, let's go to the shop right... Ooh, actually I'm going to show you this right quick. This is the collection room. You can look at cutscenes, art, listen to music, read some character info. This is where you can go to get some info about stuff. And this is the shop. Omachow runs this shop. What you do basically is buy items that'll help you out during the stages. And these items are very helpful generally. Okay, and we go to the skill customization. You can equip skill sets. We're just going to equip the skills we have right now. By the way, if you're curious, yes, Classic Sonic has his own set of skills as well. So, uh, we're going to call this Safety Runner. So you can see, you don't get to type in a name for these skill sets. Rather, you basically select a thing of names. Okay, Power Break and Surefoot and... Athleticism. Okay, awesome. We're gonna uh, change the name. We're gonna name it. We're going to call it Safety Speed, and call Sonic Safety Runner, or Safety and Runner and Safety and Speed. As you can see, we go through a number of stages based on each zone. Well, there are two stages per zone, however, I'm going to go ahead and show you this right now. Yes, yeah, so as you can see, there's there are bosses in this game. As you can see, that thick, very, very thick fog keeps us from going anywhere until we beat the the main boss of each area. Now, does it sound like there's only a few bosses in this game? Mm, maybe. Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Hey, I like this jazzy remix of Casinoopolis' stage theme. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, let's play the Casinoopolis pinball minigame. Yep, this was actually a piece of free DLC that was released way after the game came out on Steam, if I remember right. I will tell you that pinball is something I do like to screw around with every now and then. It's one of those non-video game arcade games that I actually think are... that I actually tend to enjoy, basically. Because, well, I like the way it looks, and I like the whole idea of smacking a ball around to score points by hitting various objects. That's just a fun concept to me. I know not everyone is into pinball, though, and that's perfectly fine, but let me have my fun, okay? And hey, if we share the same fun, let's compete, or let's cooperate, and take on the, the forces of digital evil together while having fun along the way. 
obviously. Okay, okay. 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 Not bad. Not doing too bad. Oh, nice. Too bad I can't seem to access a certain area of... Oh, there we go! This is the area I was talking about. Nice. Yeah, no wonder why this game's a little bit tough for OBS Studio. To keep track of or I guess record properly is that there's so much detail in this game for something that was released quite some time ago actually actually a number of games are very detailed regardless of their actual graphical fidelity they are actually very detailed and they still look good generally even on lower graphic settings for the most part so Yeah, anyway. I do apologize for not playing this on higher quality graphics, but like I said, OBS Studio kind of has a tough time with 3D games, apparently. Slash... The other reason is basically that... Well, while my computer can definitely play almost any kind of game really it does benefit it does benefit from graphics being a little bit lowered okay knock those over awesome ooh I think this is the oh crap I think this is the first time I okay let's see what happens when oh I yeah. got Something good might happen regardless of... Ah, oh, crap. I got... Oh, crap. Eggmans. Ah, oh, great. I hate getting Eggmans. Ah. So, yeah, these tokens can be used for the slot machine item. Slot machine, basically, on the board. And, yeah, this can basically increase your chances of getting extra rings. Boing. I said boing. Come on now. Yeah, I'm only doing this once with each character, and if something screws up, I am going to end it off here. Okay, let's see if I can... Okay. Yep, I think that's enough s points for now. If only I can stop being decent at this. If only I can stop being actually pretty decent at this. This long enough for us to, uh... Go back. But I guess not. Well, let's see what happened. Hey, not bad. Oh, not bad. Oh, not bad. 
Oh, and those gives you extra points. Okay, nice. Ah, crap. Just when I was... Just when I was starting to really rack up some points there. Okay, I like how the rings are still in the background. That's... That's a nice little detail. Or maybe it was just a little bit of lag doing that, but... It was nice looking, whatever. Okay, guys, that's uh, enough for now. Anyway, guys... That was pretty fun. Pretty fun so far. Yep. Well, I mean, of course, I already know the game's fun. I've played it quite a bit before doing this Let's Play. And quite some time ago, too. But anyway, uh, I'll see you guys next time. And I hope you all blast through with Sonic Speed!